Hello guys, welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Over the last couple of weeks, I've gotten a ton of questions about the gear I use, the tools I use. So today we're gonna to go through everything from the knives, to the wraps, to the glue, to the chlorhexidine, to the salicylic acid powder, everything that I use, we're gonna cover it. So I can point you guys to this video if you guys have any more questions. So without further ado, let's get started. First in, we're gonna start with the grinder, right? This is a Bosch GWS845. Um, I've used Bosch grinders my entire career. They had a slim version, which was very much the same as this for years. Uh, and they switched to this, but it's the same grinder. It's, uh, it's a seven amp grinder, 11,000 RPM. So it really, uh, it's got a lot of power and it spins fast. So it cuts, a lot, it cuts hoof well. Um, on that, we use a rotoclip wheel. Now this is a rotoclip four and a half inch, six slot, flat wheel and the slots are each will accompany uh, one insert in each slot I only use two inserts in my wheels and the reason for that is because it's more aggressive number one two if I hit a rock it only damages two inserts instead of six so that's a big thing when these these inserts run about fifty to sixty dollars for a set of six so you don't want to wreck them on rocks um, if you don't need to. So wheel. Now that simply attaches to the grinder with a couple of different uh, pieces here. The drop on wheel attaches. Simple setup. Like that We've got a wrench to tighten the setup there that you've seen a hundred times on the videos, right? Moving on. Let's go to the wraps. Well, we'll go to the knives next. This knife um, is a, it's, comes from the Frederick Dick Company. Um, we call them Dick Knives, don't laugh. That's the real name. Um, I use a double edge version so I can use, I don't have to switch hands um, or switch knives when I'm making cuts. It's got an edge. Take this off of here if I can. Discard. It's got two edges, one on the top, one on the bottom. So I can cut either way. The only modification that I make to these knives is I grind this tip down because it's too, the hook is too long and when I'm making those cuts, it kind of gets in the way. So I grind that down and kind of customize the knives to how I like them. Otherwise, that's pretty much the knife I use right there for every application, really. Wraps. I use Cattle Brand Wrap. Why? Because it's cheap, that's about it. It's, um, I don't like them to stay on too long anyway. These tend to not have a lot of adhesive to them, which is good because I want them to come off. So uh, they're about, they run about uh, 80 cents a roll, roughly. Next up, we get a lot of questions about the glue I use. I use Mini Moo Glue, it's called. It's, uh, it's, got a, it's a two part resin that mixes together to form the bond uh, via the gun that you've seen me use uh, before on the, on the videos. Um, takes about three minutes for that to cure and it's all set up and ready to go. Another uh, glue I've used is Bovibond over the years. They had some problems with their cartridges and in that time is when I switched to, to Mini Moo Glue. Um, the advantage I've found with Mini Moo Glue is it sets up really fast in the winter, which is a bonus because we spend about six months of the year here where we have freezing temperatures. So the, and the glue, I have to keep the glue warm, but in this case, the Mini Moo Glue is just better in the winter, and that's why I've stuck with it. Bovie Bond, I loved for a long time. It's a great hold, and that's another good, um, good glue to use as well. The blocks I use, move on to the blocks. I use a Bovie Bond rubber block. This is the XL size. There's a couple different sizes. The regular size I use for uh, jerseys, some smaller footed heifers, smaller footed animals and the XLs I use for most of my cow situations. Now, if I need some more rigidity in the foot, if I have um, some flexor tendon pro uh, damage or problems which that have been stretched out and I need a little more stability in that foot, um, in cases of toe necrosis, things like that, then I'm gonna go with a wood block. These are just a standard oak, um, extra large wood block, also available at uh, Armor Animal Health. What's next? Let's move on. Chlorhexidine. I get this question a lot. People really want me to use iodine. And I did for years. I used iodine. Um, a couple years ago, I switched after doing some research. I have nothing against iodine, 
but I wanted to, I always am trying to improve on what I do. So if I can find a product that could do a better job, that's what I'm going to do. I was actually turned on to this. My mom is a surgical nurse and she asked why, if I'd looked into it, if I had used it at all. And I said, no, um, she was commenting on the fact that my hands were always stained from iodine. That's what uh, brought it to her mind. So I started researching it. The reason I switched is because number one, this lasts, has a longer lasting barrier than iodine. So when I spray this on, it will actually bind to the keratin in the hoof. And that gives me a couple hours of um, protection that I wouldn't necessarily get from iodine. As soon as iodine goes into, uh, comes in contact with blood or other organic material, it becomes deactivated. So I use this to try to get that little bit la long, longer lasting um, protection, especially when I'm not going to wrap a foot. So that's what I use. I use, this is a 2% solution and I dilute that down yet even further. That's a little too harsh for putting on um, tissue. So I, I dilute this down. I use about a cup of this per gallon of water. And then um, for my tools, I will spray those down at the end of the day. <clears throat> or if I have a wart or foot rot situation, I'll spray that down with 2% solution. Next up, we have salicylic acid powder. Now, this is the stuff I use if I have a foot rot situation or if I have digital dermatitis that's growing on the sole of a foot or on a lesion, I'm gonna use this. The reason I use this and not the blue paste that you see me use is because this is much milder and it, it'll do the job. It's, it takes a little longer, which is okay, but I don't want um, too harsh a chemical on corium because that's what's ultimately gonna produce the new hoof. So I don't want that damage from uh, any type of chemical. So that's why I use that in, this, in those situations. Um, this I get through Amazon and I buy it by the kilo. Um, and yeah, that's the story with that. Next up, and probably one of my favorite things, are these WorkTune headphones from 3M. I, uh, for years, did not wear anything, no hearing protection, and didn't bother me at all. And about well, maybe 10, 12 years ago, I started wearing these, not necessarily for hearing protection, but just so I could listen to the radio and uh, have it a little bit quieter. Now I cannot trim without these things. If I'm, even if I'm gonna work on one foot, I put these on. I can't, I just, the grinder noise is too much. It drives me up the wall. So I wear these all the time now. One of my favorite things. All right, let's move on to the face shield. This is a fiber metal face shield. Uh, this is a model 300, I believe, headgear that goes with it. And then I buy these as well. These are the clear face shields. I can swap these out. Um, halfway through the day whenever they get dirty they're washable so I can reuse them a bunch of times until they get scratched from hoof chips hitting them all over they'll get scratched up uh, they simply attach here by a couple different spots on the face shot guard try this baby on for you how do I look hat on backwards that's a must if you're gonna trim feet I got a big head, so I got to really crank it. There you go. And there we have it. Now, you'll see me on, I get questions too. Hey, if you're going to wear that thing, why don't you put it down? Right? Well, a lot of times when I'm working, I'll be working on the sole or the flat part of the foot. I don't necessarily need it. The chips are flying the other way. I'm not too worried about it. Whenever I, you see me flip it down, that's when I'm going to go around the toes and stuff. There's your face shields with those. All of this, these I buy, these face shields I buy by the case um, through Amazon as well. Luckily, I purchased a whole bunch of these before the pandemic because if I hadn't, I wouldn't be able to have them right now and I don't know what I would do because they're, I'm almost out of them now already and they're getting scratched up. So had I not, I'm glad I purchased these when I did last, uh, last winter or I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have them. But So yeah, that's about it, guys. That's basically all the stuff that I use on a regular basis. If you want to take a closer look at all of these things, I put links in the description below so you can check them out in uh, more detail. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them if I can. I want to thank you guys for subscribing, for liking the videos, for watching and all the comments. I really appreciate it. Try to comment and uh, reply back to all the comments. It's getting a lot harder, I'm going to tell you that. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to keep doing that. But keep putting those comments in there and I'll keep bringing you videos as soon as I can get them. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.